What were the 1991 G.I. Joe trading cards all about? You'll find out coming up next. I got a really cool package the other day. It contains an almost complete 1991 G.I. Joe trading card set. Now, quick shout out to the guy who sent this thing to me. His name is Hans Hall, and he opens up sealed trading cards. He loves doing this thing. So one day I was looking around on YouTube, and I happened to find a video of him opening G.I. Joe trading cards. I sent him a message, and the next thing I know, I got a box in the mail. So let's open it. Well, let's look inside. I've already opened it, as you can see. I've already opened it. So, so this is what it looks like. I, I'm going to always like to open stuff first just to make peek with see what's inside. But here we go. We got this stuff. I'll just take this out. Throw this wrapping away. And there we go. Wow, look at that. There we go. So what's in here? Got a box. That's cool. I'm going to set that to the side. Got a note from him. I'll set that here. And look at this. There it is. Come on, camera. This is cool. Not only did he send me cards, but he sent them in packages. Let's see if this will work. Look at that. Ready for binder. Now that's neat. This guy is awesome. So, check above. I'm going to try and put a link to his uh, YouTube channel up there. And if that doesn't work, check in the description below. So, what exactly are these cards? There's a lot of them here. I could uh, pull them out one by one and say, hey, look at these. Look at these cards. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just kind of in general talk about the cards. And I'll pull a few out here and there. So... In 1991, Impel Marketing, that's the company that produced these things. Uh, I'm going to show you the back of this one here real quick. Come on, look at this, not me. So there's a card number two, which has flint. Ooh, there we go. If you notice on that bottom right-hand corner, you see the little Impel logo. So that's the company. They put out a bunch of Marvel and DC cards once upon a time, and I don't know what else they did, but it seems like back in the 90s, late 80s, early 90s, they were a pretty big deal. So, in 1991, they released this set of cards. There were 200 cards in total. That's a lot of cards. Now, the box here, I'm going to set these over here for a second. Now, the box here contains 36, right there. If it'll zoom in on that, look at me, or look at it. 36 packages. And inside a package is 12 cards. So you could get 432 cards from this itty bitty box right there. Now, there's since there's 200 cards in a set, you might think, well, hey, you could get like two sets, two complete sets. Well, you'd have to be really lucky probably to get one set. I've read somewhere on some message boards in the past where people have said, yeah, I got one set or I got two sets. But uh, this actually wasn't a complete. He opened every single pack in this box. So you'd think there would have been a set. But unfortunately, there wasn't. Uh, missing two or three cards somewhere in there. And they shouldn't be real hard to find. I, I can't imagine. So what were these cards? Well, I mean, what were on these cards? Well, you had characters up here. And you had vehicles down there. So there was characters and there were vehicles. They had the character cards and the vehicle cards were kind of subsetted. You had like right here, these are eco warrior characters along the top. It's cesspool and flint and who else? Uh, Toxo Viper. So along the top here, you have well, actually, I keep putting these things in my hand down here. It kind of said what they were. In this case, this is the patrol set. So you had things like eco warriors and the sonic fighters, supersonic fighters and I don't think there was anything else. I think that was all of them. There were some rank and file cards. They were just some names I think in Pelp Toss and they were sound cool. There was rank and file and then the 1991 recruits and then uh, was it special battle gear? 
official battle gear, and all those cards just had characters from 1982 to 1991, and it had some of the vehicles. Now, I went through, just for kicks, um, a long time ago, because I was curious, not every single character released between that time uh, had a card, and not every outfit. If we had every outfit, that would be a lot of cards. So what else was here? Well, besides the character and vehicle trading cards, you had, as soon as I find, there we go. Well, no, that's not what I'm looking for. You had, oh, they put them out a little bit out of order. I'll grab these. They had these. And I'll zip them up a little bit and see if the camera will zoom in on them. They had Jejo comic covers. And between issues 1 and 41, not every single issue, um, not every single issue was in card form for the G.I. Joe comic. But let me show you here. There would be, on the back, a little bit of a summary right there. And I'm guessing this must be kind of who the main character was of the story, maybe. I, I'm not really sure. But uh, it was kind of neat. It was a good way that if you didn't have all the G.I. Joe comics, and even though not every card was immortalized, or sorry, every comic was immortalized in a card, it was kind of a neat cover gallery of sorts, especially back in the days before the internet when you didn't have places that, you know, showed off all the covers. Then, some other cards right here. Some other cards, boom, like these guys right here, showing the special mission covers. Now, all of them are immortalized on card. Issues 1 through 28 are all here. Well, I don't know if they're actually all here for, in, for me, but in card form, they're all there. And it does the same thing. Ooh. You know, Hans, if you are watching, whether that's your real name or not, if you're watching, I want to say thank you for these card protectors. It's making this so much more easier. <laughs> anyway, but the special missions had the same thing on the back. Some summaries and some main characters and, and so forth. And right above the character's head, if you'll notice, it said what issue it is. Well, in this case, it's appeared in issue whatever the issue number is. So... But yeah, those are it's it was a neat cool thing at the time and I still think it's neat. Then finally, here we go. This is the sad part of the video. We have the honor roll cards. And it's very sad. The reason why this is sad for those who don't know is the honor roll are all the characters that died that had passed on were shot down. In this case, I showed you uh, Blaster, or Crazy Legs, Maverick, and well, many of us unfortunately know the the unfortunate uh, mess that Battle Force 2000 found themselves in when they were all blown up, going through an oil field. There's Knockdown and Crockmaster, Voltor, Firefly. Sadly, at but let me um, let me modify that. At this time in 1991, all these characters were dead, and there's quite a few of them here actually. So, these cards, I would say, fit inside the Hama, Hama universe. So, they, they align themselves with the comic book, not the cartoon. There's nothing cartoon-related that I can find in these things. So, they're a neat set. The very last two cards are the famous checklists. There we go. Both sides, there's that many, 200 cards. So, anyway, there's a lot of cards here. I'm not going to, uh, you know, stretch them out just yet, but uh, almost 200 cards. Let me, there we go. In uh, folded up format of, what is these, Ultra Pro Protectors? That's what the cards look like. There's a stack of them. So, anyway, there's a quick little talk and talk about these cards, and I'm excited. I lost uh, my set a while ago. So I'm real excited to you know, have a set again. Oh, and before I quit, there was another set of cards put out by Impel. Uh, I believe it was the next year, called the Hall of Fame cards. There were 20 cards in the set, and we'll use the Eco Warriors example. If you notice the orange border, well, those were gold bordered. No, I'm sorry. Not the orange border, the white border. Whoa, light. The white border. That was Gold Border, and those were released in specially marked G.I. Joe figures and vehicles. So if you find some Gold Borders, they are mm, kind of part of the set and kind of not. They're like a, a little sub-promotional set of this set. 
These ones you got in the packages, the other ones you got with the figures. So anyway, there's a quick little video about GI 1991 G.I. Joe trading cards. Thank you for stopping by and checking out this video. If you'd like to drop me a line, please do so in the comment section below. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified when more of these types of videos come out in the future, hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon next to it. Anyway, thank you again for stopping by and watching, and I'll see you next time.